Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you again, Your Excellency, for having us, for bringing us back to Miami. I was at the first FII in Riyadh seven years ago with some of my dear friends. And if you had told me all these years later we'd be in Miami, that it would have spawned off so many different locations, and that in the front row, the speakers today were Gwyneth Paltrow, Robert Smith, Steve Schwarzman, and His Highness, I wouldn't have believed it. So congratulations. It would not happen without Richard Atias. And I think everyone should really thank him. <laughs> so I am so excited to be in conversation with my fellow Texan and my fellow Longhorn, the founder and CEO of Dell Computers. Um, I was thinking when we were talking yesterday, um, you started Dell in your dorm room in Austin, Texas. You were 19 years old. Yes. 40 years ago. Did you ever think that you would build one of the most important technology companies in the world? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it kind of started for me about six years earlier when I was 13 years old and I got access to sort of the precursors to the personal computer age. And I was just fascinated by the whole thing and spent, you know, all of my teen years, you know, immersing myself in that, sort of at the dawn of the microprocessor age. I go off to college and I sort of have this hobby thing where I'm like upgrading computers. And, uh, you know, a few years earlier, IBM, which was the most valuable company in the world at the time, um, had introduced the IBM PC. And I was taking these things apart and upgrading them. And what I noticed was that uh, all the parts in the computer were not made by IBM. Okay? <laughs> and they sold the thing for $3,000. And so it, to me, it kind of uh, it seemed like it was $500 worth of parts. So it seemed like it was sort of like a criminal enterprise, you know, they, they, <laughs> they, they, were, they were charging so much. And so I started upgrading them and, and eventually in my dorm room 40 years ago, actually right now, uh, 40 years ago, uh, started uh, what became Dell Technologies. And what's amazing is um, just to think of the technology revolution and where we are today with artificial intelligence. Tell us how Dell approaches this transformation. Yeah, so the interesting thing about our industry is that all of the successive waves of technology are built on top of the previous ones. And so right now what you have is an enormous amount of data, right? And, and uh, you know, just everything is connected and everything is intelligent. There's all this data. And you have computing power advancing rapidly. You have uh, memory and bandwidth and networking and all these things are improving. And then you have computer science that basically, you know, uh, says, well, okay, how can we use all this information to create things that, uh, you know, go beyond computing and calculating into cognition and creativity and something like what the brain would do, but maybe even quite a bit faster, right? And so... It's super exciting. We're already seeing it. You know, I, I kind of think we're on the way to the stadium. The game hasn't even started, but it's clearly a huge opportunity for efficiency and productivity, but also sort of reimagining organizations and saying, what can we do now that we have this incredible power to enhance human capability and productivity? Look, technology has always been about uh, making us safer and healthier and more successful in all human endeavors. And I think AI is just uh, turbocharging that at an unprecedented, you know, scale. And, you know, it took, a, it took a long time to get 5 billion people on the internet. And almost instantly, now you have 5 billion people using AI. Uh, and so it's, it's, uh, it's super exciting, a great opportunity inside our company, great opportunity to help our customers transform and yeah, I think it's definitely the defining technology for, for this decade, and we're already, we're already seeing it. Give us a couple of use cases from your customers that AI has just transformed their businesses. Sure. So, you know, in a lot of businesses, you have sort of this transcription and moving information around from different parts of the organization, right? Where 
you know, you know, information is kind of siloed, and there are people that are generalists and people that are specialists. And the reason for this, of course, is that things are complicated. And you can't have everybody knowing everything, right? And, and so, one of the things that you get with these tools is you get the ability to enhance the the you know individuals' output because it's like they have this superpower, you know, right next to them, and they can ask a question or input data, or it can suggest what is the next best step to take in this situation, whether it's in sales or customer service, certainly in software development, you know, the kind of co-pilot applications where you're auto-completing how to create code. And so, you know, it's pretty clear that the productivity opportunity here is on the order of 20 to 30 percent in major areas inside large companies. Mm -hmm. And that's just simply too big to ignore. So you'd sort of be like irresponsible if you weren't going after that. And that's what we're seeing, you know, with our largest customers. And, um, you know, I think, uh, again, it's, it's, a, it's an incredibly exciting opportunity. It's also what keeps our industry uh, super fun because about every 10 years something comes along and it's like wow you know it, it just totally changes and I think in you know healthcare and drug discovery and you know being able to effectively you know th these systems are are able to be creative you know in a way that, that humans are not which mm -hmm. is not something people expected to happen. Mm -hmm. I know you're really bullish on it, but there are also some risks, and His Excellency was talking about the regulations and how to think about that. What do you think are the you know, biggest risks of artificial intelligence? Uh, yeah, I think there are risks uh, as, as with any new technology. You know, technology doesn't wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to be good or bad today. It, it does what we tell it to do. Right? And so we have to have it reflect our humanity and our values and our beliefs. And, you know, we have to make sure that, you know, the bad people, you know, uh, don't, don't get hold of it too much. And to the extent they do, we have ways to, to stop them and, and to control that. Uh, but I think, I, you know, I would err on the side of, of you know, uh, ha having more of this in, in the future than less. Because trying to control it, it's software after all. Mm -hmm. right? And, uh, you know, I, I, I do think... There will be mistakes, there will be problems and, and challenges, but ultimately it is going to expand human potential and creativity and capability dramatically. And I'll also just say one thing about regulation. You know, if you came up with a regulation for AI, let's say a year ago, not to use a specific example, I would predict that within, you know, another year, it's going to look like maybe that wasn't, <laughs> so well done because it, the, it's just changing so quickly. So mm -hmm. it, it's going to be very, very hard to regulate it. I'll, I'll, I'll just say it that way. Sure. <laughs> but people will try. <laughs> they will try, we know, for sure. We know those regulators. Yes. Um, so you have 133,000 employees globally, quite a few in the kingdom. Tell us how you think about the economy in the Middle East, the opportunity, the entrepreneurship. So, you know, I went back and checked, and in 1990, the company was six years old. It was the first time we sold systems in the kingdom. Hmm. And, uh, you know, we're excited uh, next month at the Leap Conference. We'll be making some major announcements about our expansion in the kingdom with manufacturing and supporting the development of, of uh, you know, uh, the, the, the talent base. Uh, and certainly, you know, everything in support of Vision 2030, we just see tremendous opportunity. We see uh, great, you know, entrepreneurs. We see a, 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 a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, conviction and excitement around building a great future. And and uh, it's certainly uh, probably the most exciting, you know, region of the world in terms of, of growth and opportunity. And certainly when I look at the scale, the ambition, and the vision, uh, it's inspiring, and we obviously want to want to be a big part of that. Terrific. So it's been really fun working with you and Greg Lemkow and Byron Trott just the last several months. Um, tell us your vision for the combined firms and how you thought about it from a family investor perspective and global invest investor. 
Sure. Well, first of all, Dina, it's great to have you as vice chair and president of the firm. And, and uh, as you know, we're building something very special for founders and family-led businesses with advice and, you know, capital and investment solutions. And it, it kind of started about 25 years ago with my family office, which was to help me diversify from my holdings in Dell. And we built uh, some great investment platforms. And, you know, then uh, about a year ago, we merged with Byron's, you know, BDT, which had created this incredible network of the, you know, largest and most successful families, largely in the U.S. And, you know, today together, we have uh, an incredible platform to invest on a, on a you know, a long-term, you know, uh, generational basis around, uh, you know, private equity, credit, real estate, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, I, I've certainly got the majority of my capital invested with the teams. I've watched them grow and, and develop. Um, Greg and, and Byron and, and, and you are running the firm on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. I have the pleasure of being, you know, chair of the advisory board, and I certainly get involved in certain of the of the of the opportunities that are that are exciting but it's a it's a great uh uh platform it's a lot of fun i love business and i love investing and you know we're, we're building something very special i agree with that let me ask you um one last question you and susan have been incredibly generous philanthropists the michael and susan uh, dell foundation has focused on entrepreneurship healthcare. you know as we think about um in, investing in the, an effective impact. How do you both think about it? I would say we haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> we're, we're certainly spending a lot of time, and and, and uh, you know we've done a lot of great things around uh, you know scholarship and microfinance and you know uh, helping some of the education systems have much more. Uh, you know, outcome and, and result or orientation. And look, I mean, what, what I've found to work very well is to take business people mm -hmm. that are outcome, results, data, fact oriented, and, you know, kind of shift their mindset to how do you use capital in a constructive way to create great outcomes. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been focused on with our foundation. Much, much more to do in the future, but, you know, we're, we're off to a good start. An amazing example, you're being a bit humble, is you have built um, the best hospital for children in Texas. Tell us why that was a, a special focus for you. Well, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's been fun being in Austin for the last 40 plus years, and partly because it's it's been a growing city, it's needed a lot of new things. And one of the things it needed was a, a new children's hospital and children's hospitals, if you do them right, are really incredibly special places. Mm -hmm. And so we've had a lot of fun with that and, you know, being able to attract great talent. It's, it's actually a multi-decade project that started with pediatric research, then a children's hospital, then a medical school, you know, a teaching hospital. And so we're building something pretty special in Austin all around the University of Texas, mm -hmm. which is a, you know, just a wellspring of, of talent and, and excitement mm -hmm. uh, in, in Central Texas. That's great. So I think you're making a pitch for FII Austin, right? <laughs> right, uh, Sure, excellency. yeah, I'm sure uh, Mayor Suarez wouldn't be too happy about that, but uh, <laughs> he, he can he, add. I, he, 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 he loves the Longhorns too, yes. and he, like, I think he likes barbecue, so we can. <laughs> So it would be a great city. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. It was a really terrific conversation. Honored to be here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you.